without my glasses. I don't know. All right. We are live. I'm going to go ahead and share this to a couple places. And then I will tag you on it to make sure that people see it. That makes a difference. Yeah, it does make a difference. Okay. One more thing. You gotta love social media. <laughs> <laughs> of course. What do you do without it? Okay. Right. I just want to tag you on this real quick. Mm -hmm. And then this. There we go. Oh, and then, of course, you have the corona situation where we in Sweden have been um, in a different. Um, we've not been quarantined the way others have been and that may be something to talk about yeah absolutely i mean so all right hello everyone good morning or uh, good good evening i guess depending on where you are um this is tim watson uh with my guest here daniel is it is it marco is daniel name? Marco, yes sir daniel marco um hi i uh been doing these interviews for the last couple of weeks and uh i Happy to say that Master Marco is my first international guest. So uh, welcome, sir, live from Sweden. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, Sweden. <laughs> um, yeah, it's funny. I, I, I got a chance to talk to Master Hutchinson last week, and um, he mentioned you and mentioned being uh, great friends with you. And he got a chance to uh, visit you, I think, quite a, quite a while ago. Some years ago, he was here enjoying the snow. <laughs> at the time uh and then i also got a chance to uh chat with uh master fairly dan fairly and uh he was saying that he he had the opportunity to spend some time with you as well i think through master's clinic so and also when he was over with uh, with then uh not quantian but with bodun when they were over in in uh, the uk for a clinic a long time ago yes excellent yeah so, yeah we were chatting off uh line but we kind of start these all with uh you know just just give a background on 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 yourself and and uh your your martial arts journey how you may have gotten into that and and anything else you want to share to start us off okay yeah so um gosh I'm, well i'm gonna be 55 this year so I, I guess 50 years ago uh i snuck into my older brother's room and he had the all these martial arts books there were you know, Japanese karate styles and some jujitsu stuff. And, and I, rem I remember the uh, Masatutsu Yama books with uh, Kyushin Kai when he was hitting the horns off of the bulls and stuff. And that really just sucked me in. And then uh, from that on, I, I would sneak into his room and I would read these books and, uh, and, and kept doing that. Uh, we didn't have any uh, martial arts schools where I grew up in Sweden when I was a kid. But then uh, um, I moved to San Antonio, Texas. Um, in my early teens, and, and I started with Taekwondo there when I was about 14, I guess. Didn't last too long because uh, I kept going to Sweden in the summers. Um, but I, I, it was more like a home type of training. I, I was just, I would always follow martial arts. I'd read books and stuff, but I never found a, a formal class where I was um, until I, um, where was I? I guess it must have been in. Uh, I was in Texas doing some art, yes, some Shotokan. And then I moved, uh, actually I moved to, um, to, to uh, Switzerland and I was DJing uh, around the world. And then from then I went to Lowell, Massachusetts. This is in 1989-90. And I was taking Shotokan, uh, but at this pizza place, there was a note saying uh, free, uh, uh, free classes for, uh, for a semester uh, fill out the form. You can win a uniform, da da da. And it was Tang Sudo. I'd never heard of it, um, but I filled in the form. I figured, why not? Uh, and um, at the time, I, I'd been reading and looking, trying to find a style that would suit me, I guess, because long and lanky and stuff. And I, I 
started to realize that the reforms that possibly could fit better or not. So I was like open to trying things. Um, and I went and it was a uh, World Tongue Sudo school um, with Khaled Dadu from Syria who was running class. He was a third down at the time, I think. So, Fantastic instructor, uh, really, really good, just the way I liked it. And uh, so I, I immediately got hooked and, and signed up. I didn't have much of a understanding of the actual, I think like we all do, the World Tongue Sudo Association as such when we start out, but but him as an instructor and then the, the curriculum and everything we did was just fabulous. And it was an easy transition from Shotokan. Um, and, uh, but I, I didn't stay there very long. I was only there for about a, a year and then I went to Japan and obviously there was no tongue sudo, but I, I could at least keep up training. Uh, so I was doing Shotokan there and at the, I could see the, like, the, the likenesses so I could at least keep up my training. Uh, but I knew that it was tongue sudo that I wanted to do. Uh, so when I came back to, uh, to the States, I actually wasn't going to be in uh, Lowell anymore. So I, I moved to Texas. So I called headquarters and said, I'm moving to Texas, to San Antonio, which is where I used to live when I was a kid. Uh, I'm going to go down for college for a while. Is there tongue sudo? And I was really happy when Maggie Gonski answered and says, yes, there's, well, there's Master West. You can contact him. I was only green but at the time, I think. So um, I was happy with that. So uh, I came down and made contact with, with Master West and, and uh, he kept up the same curriculum. I obviously got more in, involved in the association and what it entailed and um, stayed with him until I was a red belt and moved. Then I moved to Colorado and uh, there was no tongue sudo in Boulder, Colorado, where I was about to finish school for the next two years. Um, but there was traditional uh, Taekwondo-ish and there was, all, there was some Modiquan. The school was kind of mixed and the instructor knew of, of, of Quan Shin Nim Shin, so uh, he allowed me to train. And I also trained with the Shotokan school, just again, to keep this up. And then I just studied out the videos and the books to keep up the World Tongue Sudo stuff. And when it was time to, to test, I, would, I flew down to Texas and I would do my tests. And uh, I was, I was um, knock on wood, I, I was, I was uh, lucky, I shouldn't say, but I worked hard, but I did pass my tests and I eventually got my black belt. Uh, from a distance coming down there, which was fabulous. It was also great to come down and, and train with my friends down in Texas. And that was, uh, must have been 93, I think. Um, and then um, in 90, December 93, I, I graduated and uh, ended up in Sweden. I don't, I still don't know how, I know why. My wife is Swedish. Um, so I ended up in Sweden. There was no tongue sudo here. Again, there was Shotokan and, and other schools. So I was looking to find something that I could keep up my, my training with, um, but I wasn't really thinking of starting a school uh, and looked around everywhere really. And there was some really good traditional styles, but they didn't really fit the format or they were too far away. And then I was lucky to run into a style called Yushinkai, which turned out to be very much like Shotokan in the little town where I lived. And I asked, can I train with you guys? Uh, I'm, I'm a black belt here in this, but I, I mean, I'm happy to come in as a white belt. It doesn't matter. And I started training with them. And then it only took about six months. And uh, their instructor said, we got some political issues. I'm not going to stay with this organization. So there was a meeting and they're just like, well, we don't have an instructor. What do we do? And then I said, well, if you want to, I'm happy to teach, um, but it'll be tongue sudo. But so you just have to switch style. And they uh, voted and they said, okay. So I ended up with a school <laughs> with 20 somewhat members. Uh, and uh, so as of from 95, uh, it became a, a World Tongue Sudo Association school. And now we're celebrating 25 years with about 135 students. So luck, I guess, or uh, karma, faith, I don't know. But um, if that school wouldn't have defunct, I don't know. Uh, maybe I wouldn't have started the school. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, well, it sounds like you you put yourself in the, the, you know, you had the skills to, you got put in that situation and then you had the opportunity, you know, based on your training before that to uh, pick it up. I, I, I had some wonderful instructors that obviously I'm passing on what they've taught me and then it was just go get it. Yeah. That absolutely. I wanted to touch base on, um, 
something you said that kind of rings true to what's going on now where you were in Colorado and, and training on those videos and books and you know, we're, we're going through this, uh, the lockdowns in, in many parts of the world, and everyone has, you know, access to anything they want now. And, yeah. and back then you were able to do that by yourself and, and have that perseverance and determination. And uh, what, what made you, what made you have that drive to uh, continue to train, even though? Gosh, you know, um, if, when I look back at my youth, I, I would try, I tried all sports. And if the sport wasn't available, I'd, I'd start it myself. Like there was no Frisbee or baseball club in Sweden where I lived. So I started those when I was a kid because I liked it. I wanted to get more people to play with. But I never got really good at, at one thing. Um, and I think as I got older, it's like perseverance, like no retreat. Those that, That's really stuck with me. And I was like, I'm not going to give this one up. I'm going to keep at it um so i think that was one thing and then of course it's definitely a consequence of, of the the great instructors that i that i've had um up until that time and of course uh coming in along the way with with other masters and instructors that i've been fortunate to train with along the way that also makes me want to stay um but but i think it's really been that foundation that was so strong that really made me want to Yes, I want it. I really want to do this. This I'm not going to quit. And we all we're all there. Kate, you know, once in a while, we're like, oh, I can't do this anymore. But then he's like, no, persevere. You got to do it. So I think that that I'll have to give it to, to um, the foundations of our organization and my instructors. Absolutely, Master West has been a big part of that. But also, a big big credit to Master Trogeman who helped me out here in Europe when we started out. Um, been, been very instrumental in, in helping me run Sweden initially. Yeah. Awesome. Um, going back as far you were, you talked about traveling and being in so many different places. Where did that come from? Your parents originally, and then you just kind of kept that love of traveling, or? Um, well, I was. We always traveled a lot when I was a kid, but that was just for vacation. But the move to Texas initially was my, my uh, stepdad uh, who was selling airplanes. He was Swedish too. So we, it was just uh, headquarters in San Antonio, Texas. Um, and then my parents, they moved back just after a year and a half. And I stayed on with uh, my best friend and his family. So I could live, I lived with them for almost two years and finished high school. And then I went back to Sweden to do military, but I was DJing and, uh, that eventually, I guess, the reputation spread and I got contracted to, to be a DJ in Norway for two years. And then I guess somebody heard of me and then they said, can you come down to Switzerland and DJ down here? So I did that for about a year. And then I, at that time, I was like 24 and I figured maybe now it's time to go to university because I wanted to wait to feel mature enough to do it or, or ready. Um, and then that's how I got over to Lowell and then got into, yeah. So it was just, it, I think it's just been part of work and I'm mean, open to travel and, and try things. What, uh, what, what type of, I'm assuming obviously it was electronic music, but what, uh, what genre was it that you? Oh on? gosh, back in the early days, uh, 82, 83, 84, uh, we had a, a new wave-ish, uh, club in, in San Antonio where I DJed it was just a mix of, of punk new wave uh, synthesized music lots of that stuff um, uh, not the stuff that you would normally see on MTV particularly not here on the radio in a, in a rock and roll town like San Antonio was um, so it was, it was a different different it stood out quite a bit now when I go to San Antonio it's what I hear the, it's the music in the mall <laughs> which is kind of funny <laughs> But yeah, so we were, and my band that I had was was all synthesized, and they were were early, I would say, uh, kind of unique, stood out. Yeah. Cool. But then I got into, uh, you know, as as time moved on, it got into more. Uh, uh, I would say I played a lot of uh, R and B, funk, um, that kind of stuff, and then uh, some clubs they would have to be more commercial, obviously, depending on where I was. But I always took pride in in playing stuff that music that people never heard or even styles that they hadn't heard and get people to dance to that was, was one of my things that I like to do. So, yeah, but it's, it's what I listen to now. It's still the stuff that I like 
between 79 and 84. That's, that's most of the stuff that I like, actually. Are there any any mixtapes uh, floating around there somewhere? <laughs> there are, and there's there's uh, obviously on my Spotify. I have some some playlists with with stuff that I used to like or still like. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I'm, I'm getting some some comments here. Uh, Master Drew Hobbs says uh, hello, sir. Oh, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, Yoshi Oda says good morning. He also has a question. Um, Yoshi says, "What's the most memorable moment in Tongsudo, Sweden's 25 years of history?" That's a that's a pretty big question. Uh, wow. We're still waiting for it, Yoshi. It's when you come over. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, gosh, um, the most memorable. Ooh, Maybe talk about really, really tough. I mean, there's a couple. Um, I would definitely have to say one would be one was our 20th anniversary when we had guests over. Uh, we also had um, there was a surprise dinner that my my students set up for me, um, where I felt very honored. It was a very big surprise. Um, but I think the times when we've had visitors come over uh, have always been very, very special because, I, I mean, they, they infuse so much energy to me, but also to my students. And being far away that I've been for such a long time, I'm in, in Sweden alone for a long time, even in Boulder uh, alone for a long time. I've always cherished the times when I've been able to go. I remember the first clinic I want to go to. Uh, which is the, fir the first one in, in the UK, in Wales, it was just a, it was just massive infusion of energy. And, and when I could see that my students got to experience this one with visitors coming, all of those uh, times have been special. When we had, you know, obviously Master West and, and uh, with Master Holmcheck, we had Master Robinson, et cetera, et cetera, I can come over. All of those times have been very special. So I, I'd have to say, I can't just pick one, but if I have to pick one moment, it was it would be our 20th anniversary. So our 25th, which is supposed to have been in next week, two weeks, uh, which is obviously moved up now uh, to October, uh, will probably be the biggest one since we're also expecting to have Quan uh, in strong here. I've We're seen still that. waiting for the big, big one, but but all those interactions have been really super. I've seen pictures of the the place that you plan to host it. It's pretty mm, yeah, <laughs> it yeah, like there you go. Yeah. <laughs> how did you okay. how did you find that place? It's it's pretty amazing if you've seen the whole place from the outside. It's it's um uh, it's a big hotel. It's a ten story Chinese type of hotel, um, and then. In the, in the woods behind there, uh, there's this Shaolin temple, which is the inside you can see in this picture. But this hotel, it's right by one of the main highways going north from Stockholm. People pass by there all the time and everybody knows about it, Dragon Gate. But nobody really knew what's gonna happen with this. It never opened. It was a very quirky story with the Chinese man who built it and all. And I've stopped there and I've, you know, the, the grounds are incredible, but I never saw the Shaolin Temple until one of my students who's in in um, in property. He, he goes, hey, have you heard of Shaolin? I mean, the Dragon Gate, uh, the Dragon Gate Hotel. I said, yes. Well, have you heard of the temple? I said, no. And I've been there a lot of times. He goes, oh, it's in the woods in there. So we went up and we came into this place and I'm like, wow, it didn't look like this. It was just a wreck. Snow was coming in, uh, stone floor and, and it was storage. It was just a mess, but I could see the potential. So he said, hey, do you see a potential with this? Can we do something? And I said, yeah, I'm in. And then we refurbished it and, and set it up. So now it's a it's a training temple that anybody can rent and, and uh, use for, you know, whatever type of training they feel fits this kind of uh, atmosphere. And there's also lodging inside, there's a kitchen, so you can stay in there and you're, you train, you sweat, you eat, you live. Um, unfortunately, it's an hour and a half away from home, so it can't be our permanent dojang. I wish it was. Yeah. Um, it's a little too far for that, but uh, it's a fabulous place. I mean, it's it's a unique one. At least in Europe, it's it's absolutely unique. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure it holds even more of a place in your heart since you were you you kind of helped. Oh, it's yeah, it's special for sure in many ways. But yeah, and there's actually Shaolin monks have lived and trained in there. It's, Oh wow! Too, yeah, so it's it's not just we're saying it is, but it really it's it's the real thing. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, going back as far as the you know Tungsudo in Sweden, 
when you went back, when, you know, think, think back now where you took over those 20 students to where you then talked to, I don't know, maybe it was Master Trogerman and said, you're in charge of Sweden. <laughs> uh, tell, tell me about those days. Like, oh gosh. Um, well, initially it was more of a, it, it took, it actually took some years before I think somebody realized that I was up there by myself. We were just kind of running classes and, and I was testing people, sending things off, but nothing, there was nothing, no one really made contact. Uh, I'm not, not to blame anything, but it was because I was up there by myself and I, I guess no one really knew. Um, and then um, we had uh, uh, one of the Dutch masters who's no longer with us came up and he, he I think this was in 95 or so. Oh, I got invited to, to a thing in, in to a clinic in, in Germany in 95. Uh, which was wonderful because I got to see Master Sharp down there too from Texas. And that was, that was a good infusion. And then that kind of got me more connected to the association as a whole. And then we had the, the Master Chogaman come up and he's helped and he, we did some testings and we did some clinics. We had Master Khan come over, of course. Uh, he was then the regional director. And, but I think if your question is, was it more pertaining to support wise or how did i survive those first years or yeah what like the uh, essence of your question so did it seem did, did anyone ever come and say hey i need you to be your tongue pseudo sweden <laughs> like if there's any you know S swedish schools you're they're, they're your kind of yours to look over no that didn't happen yeah <laughs> um which is actually what I wrote in my thesis to, to, to kind of templatize uh, and look. My, my last thesis was, um, since we do have people who move internationally, if we can um, facilitate for, for, for black belt students to, to travel and then move somewhere in a country where there's no tongue sudo um, and make it easier for them to start up a school, uh, help them to understand these are the the rules and the regulations in this country this is what you need to do i think if we can pinpoint that and then help and, and also keep an eye on somebody moving then i think that's a great way to grow world tongue sudo um because if if it would have been really easy for me to just say okay i'm in a different country there's no tongue sudo i'll just keep up with shotokan or something and, and and leave um for some reason i i didn't but um i don't think everybody does that so if if from headquarters perspective could follow students who move somewhere and then say, hey, you're in this country. This is a template format that you can use in, in this country. We, we got an eye on that. That could definitely help grow, I think, uh, with country-wise. So that actually was, was my thesis. I think that's great information to have because teaching for, for years, you, you have those students who leave and then you try to follow up with them and they, they never found a school or never, you know, did anything going past that. So I, I think that that's, that's a great resource that, that should be out there. So I, I can and, and I think nowadays it's so much easier to track. Back then, uh, you know, there is barely internet, not for, for every man at least, or a woman. Um, so it was all phone and fax and, you know, um, these days you can track somebody like this. So I think that would really facilitate the ability to grow the association when as soon as somebody moves. Right. Yeah. Got another question from uh, Anthony Bracco. He asked, oh. uh, how are the students different in the USA uh, and Sweden, if, if there are any? If they're different. Um, or maybe well, talk, about, talk about like the, the training, if the training's different or. I would say the, um, the, the the one big difference um, that you will find really between Europe and the US, and I'll exclude England here uh, or the UK because it's, it's still English, but that's the, the word sir or ma'am. Um, we are not in our culture. Uh, we don't have yes, sir, yes, ma'am. I mean, I grew up in Texas. So I mean, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. That's it's part of you know my culture as such but it's not part of swedish culture um it's very informal 
Uh, it's always first name basis. It's not Mr. This, Mrs. That. It's not Dr. This, Dr. That. So um, you do have that in Germany, but, but it's still very informal as far as culture goes. So I would say that would be the big difference. If you come here and you expect to have everybody bowing and uh, like, I, I obviously in in our classes people know to vote bow so obviously we, we're protocol but as far as um how will i explain this as a culture we're not a bowing culture we're not a, a hierarchical it's very very um one-on-one -on -one, you know buddy basis that kind of thing first name basis always um but we're but but we're very as, as swedes we're also very distant standoffish we're not hugging as much like if Italians or, or French, they're all hugging and kissing. So there's some differences. But in class, I would say it, it's the hierarchical part that you have to, you have to realize you're not going to have people go, yes, sir, by, uh, because it's not in the language. They would say, with the, so we use Korean terms normally. We say, yeah, sub name or uh, those kind of things. Uh, but when we have visitors come in from the states or england for example we of course they're used to now saying yes sir yes yes ma'am is, is more difficult because they're, they don't interact too many with, with yes ma'ams but um yeah so that would have to be the main thing i don't know if that answers the question but when it comes to you know training and stuff no there's not really a difference i mean you know kids are kids and they run around and you got to you know try to keep them in line and then you have students who pick up like this and you have students who never pick up and students who know what the left is right away and then sometimes it'll take three months before they realize oh the left is not over here it's over here same same i'd say definitely yeah yeah i, I still have you know in, in teaching over video i still have kids where i'll say left side and they'll be like they'll look yeah. at their hand to figure out which one makes the l <laughs> yeah. oh okay yeah that's a good one yeah we, we, yeah, we <laughs> We, we, I always use the, the good day hand because we shake, you know, you shake with your good day, good day. That's what we say in Swedish, good dog. So, but yeah, but so that one, and I would say, um, I was thinking one more thing. Oh, there's another thing. We don't have weapons in Sweden. Mm. I mean, yes, people do hunt. Um, but I mean, I, I can't remember when I, I've seen a gun, maybe uh, somebody was going out hunting and they had a gun bag somewhere. But we don't see guns um so i would say that's a big difference when you talk about weapons and, and that kind of culture um you know when when the corona crisis started i was i think somebody i was texting um the liquor sales went up in sweden by i think 10 percent. whereas i there was i saw some reports that the gun sales doubled in, in some states in, in the states um different cultures yes <laughs> Yeah, lots of ammunition was bought in in certain states. Yeah. <laughs> so people are not used to to weapons here. Uh, so when we talk like self defense, some some self defense ins instructions over here have been very. This is the way it is in the streets in America, and we're like, people here are like, we don't understand because we don't we never face that, and hopefully we never will. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some differences too that, that come from society and, and uh, how that affects us as students, I think, and how uh, reciprocal we are to some, some violence because we're, we don't see it as such. It's growing here, unfortunately, but it's definitely not the same as in the States. Gotcha. Yeah, it's another interesting uh, part that maybe some people don't think about, like if you did want to uh, teach it a in a different country, having to take those uh, social differences into account. So yeah. that's, that's actually very interesting. Um, I want to go back. Uh, obviously, you've, you've probably had some interactions with uh, the, all the quangenims, but um, do you have a, a story as far as like maybe the first time you met Grandmaster Shan or? or uh, oh, wow. inter yeah, well, I remember that vividly. Absolutely. It was in uh, Master Sharp's uh, old school. Uh, in Texas, um, we were up for a camp, the Texas group, and uh, that's the first time I got to meet him. Uh, and I remember it was, I think everybody I meet say the same thing. It, oh, it's like, he, he would sit and talk to us like, like a normal person. I still remember that. Uh, that was 
and I've heard so many people say the same thing with, with your grandma Sushin. It was like, yeah, it was a, just a normal person. Whereas with some of the Japanese, even masters or instructors, it was like, couldn't even talk to them. <laughs> so um, yeah, that was, that was uh, a positive shock. Uh, and then I've, when he was in Germany at that time with the clinic we had, we were at the, 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 uh, the beer tents because it was Oktoberfest in Munich. Um, just being able to sit down and, and, you know, share and say prost and, and have a beer with, with the grandmaster was like, wow, it really just put the whole, that really was the, the essence of the culture of, of our association, I would say that friendliness, being able to, yes, we're serious on the floor, but we can also be serious, fun. And, and um, still, of course, it was that, yes, sir. But, but you know, anybody who's interacted with Grandma Sushin knows what I mean. So. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's, uh, you know, throughout all the interviews I've done so far, that, that is definitely a common thread and um, something that Master Hutchinson shared as, as well as, yeah. you know, train hard, work hard, but then, you know, once that's done, we can still like, you know, it's, it's cool for me. I sent you a message on Facebook and said, Hey, I would love to do an interview with you. And you said, yes. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Not necessarily. I've met you in passing at master's clinic. I've seen you. Um, but having that, camaraderie knowing that we're both you know world tongue Sudo association you know we're brothers in that art you know just speaks volumes because like you said i'm sure that that is not the case in in other associations no, no absolutely it's very rare i mean speaking of, of math hutchinson that's how we met because i was in the golf industry back a long time ago when when he was also in the golf industry and and I, I was going to Orlando for a, for a, the big PJ show. And then I, I called up Mag and I said, is there anybody teaching in Orlando? And she goes, yes, there's Mr. Hutchinson. And I said, wow, I'd love to hook up with him. Can you, can we hook up? And she shared the information and we hooked up online. And then it turns out, oh, he was going to be at the golf show as well. So we hooked up there, which is great. And then I got to go train with him and, you know, in his church. And then every time I'd come over, we'd train together. Um, again, that's just fantastic being able to do that and and that's why i always encourage my students whenever you go somewhere bring your dobok and and you know let's see if there's a school somewhere so you can go train because that is just that's i think it's it's incredible the, that opportunity that the, the network uh, is makes available to to us all it's fantastic yeah absolutely um my instructor is master godwin and mm -hmm. you know for many years master Trogerman Every time the master's clinic happens, he would come to our dojang afterwards. Yeah. And share. And, oh, yeah. um, you know, same with not, he's not in the association anymore, but Aldwin Lee is the same. Yeah. Well, it was Aldwin who came up. He was the first one to come up to Sweden. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. He's amazing. I, I, Master Lee is, uh, I've got to train with him a lot and he's a, he's a great guy. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, I, Oh, I, I wanted to double back with Master Hutchinson. I'm assuming you probably have a uh, a, po uh, a t shirt on his wall. Yes, and I have his t shirt wearing it occasionally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got to talk to him about that, and he's I, he said he had like a lot, probably like a hundred t shirts on his wall. <laughs> yeah. Nice. yeah, that's good. I like that. Oh yeah, that's really cool. Um, Anthony has another question and, and obviously a timely one. Um, do you have any master Michael K stories? Um, or, you know, times of training with him? You know, I, I never had the opportunity to go to um, the, the very special clinics that him and master uh, Holmchick had. Um, but um, I've had some, some interactions with him that um, were very special. Um, one on a on a very social basis where we uh, enjoyed uh, speaking of, of uh, um, good flavored uh, liquids, um, <laughs> and um, we had a little a little camaraderie that was very special that I I cherish. Um, that was pretty neat. I I don't think I can reveal more than that because yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, but it was pretty, it was very neat. But, but um, 
he was, I remember uh, he was at my, um, at one of my tests. Um, I'm not sure if it was my, maybe it was my final test, I think. Um, and, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Cause he was, yeah. supposed, to, he was, was supposed to get his fourth down. Well, yeah, my fourth down it must've been. And, uh, I remember he, um, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, I don't know. We, we got so many great uh, martial artists in the association that, you know, I, I can't even compare myself to, but, but, but it was neat because after my break, cause I was really charged for that break. And I, I remember so well, it was, we were, I was, we couldn't see what we were doing. Cause I was, at least I couldn't, cause I was, it was my back towards everything. And I was just, and then, you know, obviously it was just turn around and go. And I still remember how many setups there were, but, but I know I, I broke it all. And as we were lining up, he whispered in my ear, he goes, now I, now I got to see the warrior in you. And I, I gosh, it tears me up when I, when I say that. So I, I cherish that very much. Um, so I just have a, like a small piece of a master K um, that I carry with me, but I very fondly uh, from some special interactions like that one. Uh, and I know people who obviously have trained with him forever. It's, I mean, it's been their, their life with him. Um, yeah, gosh, another loss, of course, to our association. But then again, he's left so much uh, that we got to just carry on. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, it's funny, I, I was trying to explain to my kids yesterday about those, those little moments that, you know, they're, they're fleeting, they're very quick, but they stick with you forever. Oh, like, yeah. and it could be that it could be someone giving you a little detail. So, I mean, <laughs> it was a small moment, but obviously a, a, a huge impact that oh, yeah. and, absolutely. That's, Great. that's amazing. Um, so thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thanks. Oh. Thanks for the question, Anthony. Um, I wanted to go back to, you know, obviously you're, you're, in Sweden, but the interactions with the uh, Europe in general, as far as World Tung Sudo and, and uh, Master Khan and, and the clinics there, can you maybe talk about your some some visits to the UK? And I'm assuming you you go to the the master European Masters clinics as well. Yes, um, yeah, uh, and like I said, the the first one I got invited to was, I guess, the first one in Europe. Um, and I got to go because it was a leadership clinic and not just a master's clinic, which has been that set up for, for Europe. So it's masters and leaders. At that time, I think we had more visitors from the US than we had participants because it was such a small, we were a small group. But I, and I was, a, must have been second on at the time, I think. And I got invited because I was head, head of the country. Um, and um, uh, God, I, I had so many wonderful memories from that time there was master washington from australia there was master wick obviously and you can put them two together uh we had some late nights i was just listening to stories uh, there's a whole bunch of people there um and every year of course we would have these uh, the, the the european leadership and and, and masters um, clinics and they've they've always been that same that infusion and I'm, i didn't I haven't gone to the u.s once and I think the last five years are the ones I've started going to because uh, I wanted to, to spread out more and I had the opportunity to go, but the European ones have been like the core for really keeping, keeping and sharing what we do within Europe, but also it's been that connector for those who don't go to the States to, 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 to really um, spread the same information that we're being taught over in, at, the, at the master's clinic in the U S which I could tell, obviously now we're so many that, uh, I mean, it's a huge one. Um, and uh, going to Cambridge, which we've done the last couple of years, has been wonderful. I've also obviously enjoyed going to the other countries where we've had the clinic in the past. Uh, and it's, a, it's been a great way of sharing, again, the camaraderie, the friendship. Um, and definitely. It's, and it, it has, it's definitely differs from the U.S. one because it's different culture and, and the just by as such, it'll um, it'll differ. Oops, I got a phone call. I got to turn off. Um, so the the atmosphere is the same. It's it's have fun, work hard. Um, but then there's because of the size, it's been able to do it a little different. I think, uh, and also the culture. 
Um, but it's it's very much the same. If you ever gone, you know, whoever's been to the U.S. Masters Clinic, it's 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 the same kind of injector of just boost of energy and friendship and and all that you 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 come home with and you're like wow. And then it carries you for for a year at least to the next one. Absolutely. Yeah. It's funny. I um I think my first one was 2015. So mm -hmm. I I've I've seen you at you know however many since then. So I just yeah. um, it's interesting to know that, that you know you started you started just going to them shortly after that or shortly around there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that was my first one in the states, possibly. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I think so. Yeah, and which, of course, I've cherished in, in other ways, too, because there's new opportunities. But it's also been, for me, it's been very special because I could reconnect with, with Master West, of course, who I see as my, my main instructor, obviously. Um, and because not ha having been able to go to Texas that often uh, to see him, so that's been really, really great. But then also making new friendships, which is, which is really what it's all about. Fantastic. Have, have you ever had the opportunity to go to the Latin American one? Not yet. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm I'm been thinking about it and trying to see if I can fit it into my schedule. It's it's definitely a, on my bucket list. Is what it's what I want to do for sure. Even though I heard it's a long bus ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yes, it's all I, worth it. I'm sure. <laughs> when I when I talked to Dan, he shared where they they lost the wheel <laughs> on the oh. bus. <laughs> I'd love to go to that one, definitely. I think lots of us want to go, but yeah, it's it's a it's, I mean, it's a long trip for anyone. Um, right. But it's 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 all about scheduling, and of course. So hopefully one day. Yeah, same here. I for both the European and the Latin American, I definitely. Yeah, we'd love to have you. Over. Um. So we talked a little about Grandmaster Shin, and I wanted to segue into, uh, you know, maybe some imp some stories on Grandmaster Bodwin. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so we were talking about that earlier. So. <laughs> yeah. Um. And obviously, he carried on the same spirit as his instructor. Um, the the friendliness, you know, sitting down stories. Again, it's not being on that pedestal up there. It, it's he really just did the same thing. And, and for those of you who've, who've seen us on Facebook, also know that I, I, I and Master Whisk and, uh, and, and uh, Grandmaster uh, Bodwin also had a little band going uh, where we actually performed twice uh, in Holland, uh, I think two years separate, um, which is very special, of course, to have a little thing there. Um, so, which, yeah, that's something I cherish. And it's it's funny because it has nothing to do with Tang Sudo, but it does because it has to do with, with Tang Sudo, if you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, we all share, uh, you know, on the floor and stuff, but those little special moments are, are those, that, that kind of sticks out. So I'm, I'm glad I can, we, we still have that. What uh, what instrument did Grandmaster Bowen play? Guitar. Okay. And uh, me being the synth guy, uh, there is, I do have a, a, a huge fondness for blues. So um, I, I think really the only instrument I could play somewhat is, is the harp, harmonica. So harmonica for me and then the Master Whisk and drums uh, and the Grandmaster uh, Bodum was on guitar. The band was, an, it was an excellent band. Uh, it took them a while before uh, they would let us use their instruments or I, I had my own harmonica. You can't travel without it, but... Uh, <laughs> They had to let you know grandmaster use the guitar and then and whiskey and on the drums but uh, they were pretty happy and they actually played with us so yeah it was good fun so but i understand grandmaster strong uh, is a musician so um maybe one day <laughs> that would be excellent <laughs> was it did it just come was it just like uh spur of the moment like hey you know you play drums you play guitar well, Phil Whiskey and I, I mean, we knew, he knows that, I mean, we're, we talk music quite a bit. And um, I don't know, I think we were talking to Grandmaster and he said, yeah, I'll play guitar. And then I went up and I was, and I told, I told Phil, hey, we gotta, we gotta, let's, let's get up on stage. And uh, 
uh, I talked to the band and then uh, talked to Grandmaster. I said, would you, would you want to? And he goes, well, I'm rusty. And I said, it doesn't matter. Let's go. And he was like, yeah, he was, he was game. And that was great. So it was very unplanned, but uh, it was good fun. And then when we got, we had the chance to do the reunion. We, um, uh, we also got an extra guy in to sing. Um, but that was, um, it was very unplanned. Um, spur of the moment thing. Good fun. Yeah, that, that's cool. And obviously a great memory for you and, and anyone who happened to be there for uh, <laughs> that performance. Yeah. Oh, it, was, it was good fun. Yeah. It, it's always fun to see another side of, of someone that you hold in such high regard. Yeah. And, like, and, you know, him and, and Grandmaster Shin never, never put themselves any higher than anyone else. And yeah. they made, made themselves very possible. Very important, I think, to, to the fact that, again, we talked about that initially. It, it's that culture. And that's why I always, I tell my students, get it, you know, go out there, meet new people. It's a big organization. There's friends everywhere. And it, it starts at the top. It really does. Yeah, and absolutely. Grandmaster Strong. Again, I mean, I have some wonderful interactions with him, and, and I'm so looking forward to him coming to Sweden. It'd be the first time we have a grandmaster come visit us. Um, same thing, uh, you know, the friendliness and, and uh, his whole family involved, and yeah, it's exactly the same. And I, I it's, it's so valuable. I yeah, I agree. I, from the first time I went to Master's Clinic, he just oh gosh, yeah, he never he didn't know who I was, but he made me feel like. You know, I, you know, like I was an old friend coming for, you know, the seventh or eighth time. Yeah. Oh yeah, very much so. And then it's, it's, um, plus he's, he's Texan. So <laughs> even better. That's right. <laughs> and his wife's from San Antonio. So yeah, it never goes wrong. <laughs> yeah. That was a, another thing. I, I'm sure I knew about it, but I was, we got to talk about that a lot more, uh, when I, when I chatted with him. Mm. And, uh, his he had a track background in college and oh yeah yeah so but I never knew about the band thing that came up in an interview was that with with Hutchinson with Matthew which one oh uh, with uh you must have strong had played for some presidents I don't remember I, I have to look I have to go back and uh listen to that again <laughs> yeah or it was it or it was Jorgensen's and and, and home checks I heard it one of these days, and it was that yeah, Grandmaster Strong had a band, and and they had played for one of the presidents somewhere. Oh wow! If I'm wrong, I apologize, of course. But if I'm right, hopefully we'll have uh, a band member, a new band there member. Oh yeah, you're. <laughs> I'll have to send him a message, to ask if there's any uh, any truth to that rumor. <laughs> <laughs> So you were saying uh, it'll be the first time that a grandmaster has come to Sweden? Yes. That's awesome. That, that must be very exciting. Obviously, um, <laughs> you know, the world is trying to put a monkey wrench in those plans, but. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah. Like I said, we're going to celebrate now in two weeks time. Obviously, that's out the door, but uh, I'm just hoping that we're going to be able to do it um, last weekend of, of October. And anybody who wants to come. Come on over, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Just in in the in the spirit of our conversation, just you. And we're you know in our planning. Obviously, I think like anybody else, we're we're planning like it's going to happen. But of course, uh, come fall and if things have not changed, uh, which I, of course we all hope they have, then we'll have to adapt. And and um, I think we'll have to do what like Matthew was saying. We'll tw Region Twenty One will celebrate their twenty first. Well, we we can tw we can celebrate our twenty fifth on the twenty sixth year. It doesn't matter. I mean, right. if, if we if we have to, we'll we'll move it, of course. Um, but I'm I'm really looking forward to this, and it's and, and I'm very nervous because we've never done we've never done anything big in Sweden. I mean, we never had a tournament. Uh, so I mean, we have the clinics, and and they've always been very appreciated. But we've never done a, an open tournament uh, of such. So it, it's there's a lot of stuff that's going to work, and I'm like, Ooh, okay. But that's it's a big step for us, and um, hopefully it'll be uh, rewarding for anybody who comes. So we'll do our the, best, that's for sure. So you're planning to do a tournament? Or are you going to do a, a clinic of some sort? It'll be at least a two-day clinic. I'm I'm thinking maybe we can throw in a little extra special in there. But there's going to be two days of clinic over at up at Dragon Gate. Um, 
And so we'll all stay and, and have the clinic there on Thursday, Friday, possibly something extra on the Wednesday. And then on, on the Saturday, we'll go down to Tabby where we have our place and do the tournament. And we'll also do the, the, the celebration dinner. Uh, the tournament dinner will be here, but we'll do our celebration dinner up at the Dragon Gate uh, Hotel in the Golden Dragon Lounge. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. When you, you, oh, Yoshi sent the message earlier or the question, and he said, uh, My October is filling up fast, so I probably won't make the 25th, but I would love, love, love to visit someday. It seems like everyone's kind of, well, our, our regional tournament, Region 8, is always in October. Um, so it's, and I, I believe uh, Region 5 is the same. <laughs> so it's going to be a don't very plan, busy. Don't plan anything for October 28, 29, 30, 31, because you got to have time to fly to Sweden. <laughs> you heard it. You heard it here first, Yoshi. You yeah. got to keep those days open. <laughs> yeah. So we have Master Home Check, Master West, uh, among others. Um, and of, you know, of course, Grandma's so strong. And, and I, if, if it, the plans still work out, uh, he'll bring his wife as well. So uh, yeah, we're excited. Yeah, that's, that's always really fun uh, is to have him. Like I went to uh, Aruba a few years ago and Grandmaster Strong and Bowdoin were both there. So it was really cool to, to have some time to, to just chat and, yeah. uh, you know, because our, our events in, in Region 8 are, are quite big. So they're, they're usually yeah. big. Oh gosh, there's so many of you. <laughs> we could use some of you guys over here. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. I, like I said, I, I would love to, uh, I've actually never been to Europe. Um, so I, I'm, I'm dying, I'm dying to, to, to come visit. <laughs> well, the door is always open. Excellent. Um, for anyone out there watching, we're, we're starting to wrap up here. So if anyone has any other questions, uh, feel free to, to, to send something. Um, how, how is your, how are things looking for you now? I, I know, like you said, I think I saw some pictures of you being able to train outside with your students right now. Um, how's, how's training going now in the, the environment that we're dealing with? Right. Good question. Yeah. So obviously it, what we're all going through is, is terrible in, in many ways. Um, and for us, I, I, I consider myself fortunate to be in Sweden where we have, um, we have a, um, a let's call it a, it, it's a social distance uh, responsibility uh, that we all as uh, citizens of Sweden have to carry uh, but we're not under lockdown as such we, we're allowed to be out um, but uh, the, the regulations are don't uh, you cannot have uh, more than 50 people gathering um, and you should you know the social distance thing two meters uh, those kind of things um, obviously you wash hands all of that stuff of course uh, but Initially, as it started, and it, we really didn't know where we were, uh, we, we didn't do anything for about two weeks, no classes or anything. And then we started to realize, okay, well, we can at least do, uh, we can teach. Um, and um, what I decided to do is, is we are actually, we are allowed to be inside, but our dojong is in like the, the, the it's not a basement, but it's a, the lower lowest floor in a big uh, sports facility, which means it's like three st stairs down. There's no, uh, there are no windows, nothing. So because of not being fresh air and all that stuff, and I, I figured, okay, we're not going to be inside, even though we're allowed to, as long as we're not more than 50 people. Plus it, it kind of contains us so that social distance is more difficult. So I decided, okay, well, let's do classes out, outdoors. And March was kind of cold. So said, hey, get dressed. And, and I found some places where I was like, well, let's try it differently. Because Tang Sudo is, you know, it's normally we're on the flat floor. We're always facing the flags. Well, we try to vary, but anyhow. Um, and we're barefooted. So I said, well, what's what's it going to be like? Well, we could be outside on a, on a grass field or something where it's flat. Well, no, let's try something different. So I found this place where there's an outdoor gym. And it's, it's just a running track in the woods. And it's, there's slopes and hills and rocks and stuff. So we, we started doing our outdoor classes in the woods so and then we lined up you know obviously spaced out and then we got to move up in the up in the woods and people got to do forms 
slanting forward or backwards or sideways and doing the hunches or whatever they were doing and there were trees in the way and that kind of just made it fun and it, and it was still tongue sudo but it was certainly different because you'd have to adapt to the environment it also got to challenge the students and myself of course but but my students to realize that wow these forms you know it's not just flat ground i got to adapt and how do i adapt my stances and my techniques etc so we did that for about a month and then weather got better and we figured okay we try that so now we're in a field actually out by my my house where there's uh, about eight or nine uh, half flagpoles about half height so we use they kind of look like those poles that that uh, monks would jump off and, and back and forth really high up but we use those and i i tape up pads around them when we have classes because i don't want anybody to hold pads because then we don't have the distance and if somebody key ups and they spit and all so we tape up the pads and then people line up and we do classes outside and that works really well. Um, uh, we don't get on the ground, of course, uh, but uh, we don't do any any pair works. All one steps, et cetera, are, are facing me or, or uh, facing somewhere, but not touching, not in pairs. Works fine. Uh, when we have cold weather or it's raining more, like in, in yesterday it was rain. No, it's, what is today? Monday. Yeah, well, yesterday it was raining. So I... I said no outdoor classes. We did an online class instead, which I do whenever it rains. And that works as well. Of course, it's not perfect. It's not being in the dojang and all that. But uh, it's we're still teaching and we're keeping it up and uh, we persevere. Uh, I'm, and again, we're lucky to be able to gather and, and train together. Uh, and I know a lot of you guys can't gather at all. So I'm, I just feel blessed that we, we can still keep it up. That was a long answer to that. <laughs> no, that's, and I, I think it's great because uh, we're looking to hopefully be there in the next three or four weeks where we can at least do outside training. Yeah. Um, so I, I appreciate you sharing because that, that, like I said, that's, that's where we hope to be because right now it's, it's all, all through zoom. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's, it's, you know, it's, the good thing about the bad thing is one of the good things is that it opens up like we're doing this now. I think this is definitely a consequence of, of where we're at. And I think, you know, just being being able to partake in somebody else's classes. Unfortunately, um, Master Bonelli's classes from from South America have been just this doesn't work time difference for me. Um, but but just being able to do that, it just it, it again, it, it opens up new uh, new possibilities and new roads to our, our teachings and our, our friendship. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wanted to share, when I looked at your master's profile, one of the things you said you enjoyed was was listening to the stories of the masters. And, and that was definitely uh, yeah. an influence of doing these interviews because I, I obviously love those and um, enjoy those. And, and now we get to put them you know, uh, out for posterity and, and, you know, anyone can get a chance to listen to them and not the, just the five or six people that happen to be around. Yeah. Um, wrapping up, uh, I, I did get a message. You, you have to help me with his, uh, I always wonder, jo uh, master, is it Jordan? Is it chapel or should chapel? Yeah. Yeah. Master so. chapel, uh, from says, are you still looking to host the Europeans in 2021? Oh, I, I think we're pretty much committed. Okay. <laughs> so, so again, everyone you know, should mark the dates now to to visit. Yeah, yeah. that's for that's for that's for uh, for next year. Gosh, I'm I'm just I'm still I'm sweating about our our Swedish <laughs> championship. That's going to be our our uh, rehearsal for the Europeans. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, sure. there you go. If yeah. you can't hit October, Yoshi, you heard it here first. Yeah. Uh, mark European. your calendars for for. Europeans in uh, 2021. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. The we we just started doing the nationals in uh, the states, and next year, uh, Chicago is hosting, so that should be fun. Yeah, because the last one was in uh, in uh, Connecticut, right? For right. The first yeah. And I was actually in Chicago at that time, but I couldn't go. Uh, I would all, I would have come down just for the day. Um, I wasn't able to, unfortunately, because I had another family commitment. But I would, I so wanted to go. That would have been great to be there at that first one. Yeah, I agree. We were. I was away too. We were uh, in Utah. 
Mm. So yeah. uh, I think that's a pretty good place to stop. Um, again, Master Marco, thank you so much for joining me. I, I really appreciate it. And oh, uh, thank you. I'm honored. So um, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for being my, the, the first, you have the, you're the first international master. Yeah. <laughs> and keep that up. I'll say, I mean, again, I, I'm speaking from where I've been before is, is, and obviously the, 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 the largest group of members are all in America, but we are World Tongue Sudo Association. So, uh, and I've, I've met some, some people over years that barely realize that we are so global that we are, we talk about the, the, you know, the six, stars and our, our the, the globe and all that in our emblem but we are truly international so um if you know being able to share and interact with, with more international masters will definitely i think uh, um, emphasize that fact that we're more than than uh, a u.s-based association which yeah, is all, for all our benefits for sure yeah definitely i'm working on a couple more and uh yeah, so if I cool. I have time, it's crazy, you know, talking to uh, Gideon, there's almost 400 active masters. <laughs> yeah, gosh, it's it's amazing. Yeah, it, it's really cool, but that's a daunting number. I, but, you know, I, I feel fortunate to be able to, to get a chance to talk to as many as I can. So um, thanks again, sir. We're all wrapped up. I appreciate it very much for that. You want to, that you want to hook up with me. I mean, gosh, I'm honored. Um, very much well, you, so. You came, you know, you came highly recommended. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks everyone for watching. Tung Su. Thank you very much. Tung Su. Hope to see you in Sweden soon. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.